Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation. This one from BMC Helix's Immersion Days in the Santa Clara Marriott in Santa Clara, California. One of the biggest challenges that every IT organization faces, in fact, every business, is how to start merging greater control through ITSM as well as greater change and evolvability of systems through DevOps. It's a big topic, a lot of folks looking at how best to do it. We've got a great person here to talk to us about it. Dick Stark is the president and CEO of Rightstar. Dick, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, well thanks very much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on theCUBE here. Excellent, well, no. why don't we start, tell us a little bit about Rightstar. Well, sure, Rightstar is an ITSM consultancy and we happen to be a DevOps consultancy at the same time. We're also a BMC solution provider and an Atlassian solution provider. Now we've been a BMC solution provider for, for 16 years, so we've been in this space a long time. And we've earned several accolades uh, along the way. We uh, made it into the Forrester ITSM service provider. It's not a, called a magic quadrant because that's what God, Gardner uses, but instead it's a wave report. And so we made it sort of into the far uh, right-hand uh, quadrant there. And if you added up all the points, we ended up in North America being rated number five out of all the different ITSM consultancies. So I was very, very proud about that. And then last year with BMC, we were the North American solution provider of the year in the DSM space. Yeah. Well, as an ex-Forester person, I can tell you, congratulations, they take <laughs> those waves very okay. seriously. Yeah. Let's jump into this question, though, of what does ITSM, from a technology and people and process standpoint, have to do to accommodate some of the changes that are being founded and diffusing out of the whole DevOps world, which is just having an enormous impact on how IT thinks and does. Oh, it, it really has. And I, I, you know, we've been in this space a long time and uh, ITSM, sometimes I tell the, the words are interchangeable. And there are about, if you can believe this, about three million people that ended up getting an IDLE certification of some sort, like an IDLE Foundation certificate. And over time, that's been a, been a really a big, big deal. However, IDLE now, is lost its luster just a little bit and it's allowed DevOps to sort of sneak in or agile or whatever you want, want to call it. And idle isn't standing still though, they've bounced back and bounced back in a, in a hard way and they've, they've come up with what's now called idle four. And idle four was just released this, this year. And it takes some of those DevOps principles and uh, it has its own value stream as well. And as a result, idle four or uh, agile, idle, or whatever you want to call it now is taking a little bit stronger position. And when I say DevOps principles, it's things like collaborate. It's things like um, pr promote. It's, it's things like operate and automate. It's, it's, it's all about, again, it's all about collaboration and some of these other values that, that uh, you'll see in, in DevOps. I, I guess what, what happened is, we, we spent a lot of time on in the idle side of things and we did things for process sake and a good example would be change management. And we spent a lot of time putting together change management processes per this idle framework, okay? And what, what happened is that a lot of the users then rebelled a little bit because it might take longer to go through and fill out all the paperwork or if it's not paperwork, the online tool set then to do a change than to actually perform the change itself. So IDLE got a little bit of a bad rap, and so that's where this whole DevOps thing has come in. And the whole idea right now is to get Dev and Ops under the same umbrella, because that's not typically very easy to do, but it's, but it's, it's certainly happening. Well, let's okay. talk about why that intersection's happening, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a little bit of history from my perspective as well. You know, ITIL began, uh, first of all, it, it started in some government agencies many years ago, right. but it started as, the basis of it was, how do we take better care of the assets within IT, which at the time were mainly hardware assets. Right. Right. In many respects, what we've seen happen over the last 25, 30 years that ITIL has been an extent, is that the, nature of the assets that IT recognizes as acknowledged as delivering value for the business has changed. We've gone from hardware to infrastructure as right. code. That's right. where DevOps is. Right. So in many respects, what you're saying is that ITIL is now trying to bring the best of what it means to do a good job of asset management with a new class of assets, right. namely software as code, infrastructure as code, and that's where we have to have that marriage. Have I got that right? 
That's, that's correct, and, and you don't want to have sil silos. You want to be, be a silo buster, if, if anything else, and I, I just wanted to mention something else that I think is kind of fun. Along with this Idle 4, we now do what's called a Mars lander simulation training. It replaced, if you'd heard of the Apollo 13 sure. uh, simulation, well, Mars 4, even though it's Idle 4 specific, it's really all about DevOps, and I took the uh, Mars 4 just to about a month or so ago, and it's a lot of fun. You sit down and the whole objective is to get, get to Mars. And you're a business though, and you're going to be selling the data that you're gonna collect along, along the way. And so the whole idea is to, is to make a profit, and you have all these different roles that you play. When I went through it, I was the release manager then, but you might have a business analyst, you might have a service desk person, you have vendors in it. It's, it's, re it's very realistic then. And typically, like a lot of large enterprises, you start playing the game and it's just ca chaos, and you have to go back and try this over and over again until essentially you get it right. And I was surprised how easy it is to get sucked in. If you're in a big enterprise, you're siloed. You have a specific role that you have to do. And you have instructions how, you, how you're supposed to do that. And you want to stick to it. Whatever, you know, whatever your assignment is, you have to do that. But that's not the right thing to do. Remember, it's about collaboration. It's about transparency. It's, been, it's about post posting your goals, posting the results, and moving forward from, from there. And so I was surprised how I got sucked into it, and so I can understand why we need to make some progress in this space, and it's all about getting people to change their behavior a little bit, and some of these new tool sets certainly help with well, that as well. Well, you know, going back to what you said, it used to be the three R's of any regime were roles, responsibilities, and relationships. And so the roles have are evolving, but so often right. it's just in name only. Right. The responsibilities, at the end of the day, it's still code, it still has to run on hardware, it's not a bunch of hamsters right. that are doing things, but as you said, it's really the relationships right. amongst the various actors as we introduce more business people, as technology gets put into position to generate right. more revenue or to do more with customer experience, the relationships are being pressured, are being really pushed to right. evolve. Right. So how do you see in your practice, in, in, in Right Star's practice, how do you see the relationships between DevOps and ITSM and the business starting to evolve so that you can have a more coherent a uh, comprehensive view of how you make system well, change. Well, I, I think in that particular case, it's going to take some time. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, that's why you have agile coaches, or that's why you have the scaled agile or the safe framework, is because people don't get it, and they need to understand how to work together better with others, and so it's not going to happen by just implementing a new, new tool set, turning the key, and then saying, okay, everything's going to be fine. I mean, it's good to get the integration between all the different tool sets, and the technology is certainly there to do that, but without having some instruction to begin with and having the darn users cooperate, you're not going to see that kind of kind of performance improvement or cost savings or whatever it is that you're looking for, you're not going to see that. There. Yeah, one okay. of the biggest challenges in any change is abandonment. The user's right. ultimately abandoned. So as you look at the ITSM tool set that you're utilizing, right. Right. Uh, mainly from BMC right. Helix, you bet. Uh, is it, is it the, there, there's a degree of, there's always a degree of pedagogy in the tool, a way it says, here's how you should do things. Right. What are you discovering is uh, that tool set is really catalyzing, helping to catalyze the kind of, you know, positive changes in your mind within a lot of your customer bases. Well, the thing about uh, Helix, and I'm, I'm very excited about this because we're making a lot of good progress with Helix at our diff customer base that we have right now. And to give you a good example, George Washington University, we're based in the DC area, they, they are too. They've been a long time Remedy customer. We've moved them to Helix. And then just recently, when I say recently, it started a year ago in, in August, they moved to the BMC chat chatbot platform. Then this past August, they totally went cold turkey with chatbots throughout the entire university. That makes a tremendous difference in the performance and not just performance, but also in the, the cost and the efficiency that the university, from, particularly from a service management perspective, is providing to its university employees and to its students. Just like you know, they mentioned today in, in, in the keynote session that it's all about mobility. In fact, practically all the students there rely on their, their cell phone day in and day out. And so when they have a question at, at GW, if it's how do I get a new account, how do I get a park, parking 
permit. Gee, my, the wireless in my dorm room isn't working. You don't pick up the phone and call. Nobody does that. You text it in. And this is a chatbot that's powered by IBM Watson, and it works great. And there's lots of good things that are going to come out of that. For example, students, I, I think they probably still have to turn papers in, right? I, you know, I, maybe it's all electronically delivered, but I think you might still have to print out a paper and turn it into your professor. I, you know, I'm not sure, but... Blue books are probably you, but, still there. But anyway, you're probably, you're, you're probably going to do this late at night when the service desk isn't open. So what do you do if you can't get the printer to work? Well, you pick up your cell phone, you text in the, the, the issue, and bingo, you've, you've got a response. So those are the sorts of things that are going to make a tremendous amount of impact, and it's going to cause people to, to change their behavior in, in really a good way. And another good example, we have another longtime hospital customer. They have a 24 by 7 service desk. They're, they're huge, and they pay a lot of money to operate that 24 by 7, but they hardly get any calls in at, at night, right? Because not that many people work. So why don't they just turn that and start using chatbots? And think of the, the ROI. It's just incredible. And I think you're going to see more and that more situations like that as we move forward. Dick Stark, President and CEO right. of WrightStar. Yep. Thanks very much for being oh, on the Cube. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Okay. And once again, I'm Peter Burris. You've been watching another Cube conversation from BMC Helix Immersion Days in Santa Clara. Thanks very much. Till next time.